Oh, we're live. And we're live. We are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of the Quarterback Center Exchange. I am your host, <laughs> Andy Carmel. <laughs> alongside F F. F F. <laughs> alongside our uh well, alongside our quarterback, we've got Aaron Zalewski joining us. Better I known as AJ. AJ. I think you can call him AJ. Go ahead, AJ, go ahead and tell the people hello. Hi, people. Welcome to the show. I'm okay. going to be robotic for now. He's going to be robotic today. Don't you love that guy? So I wanted to just uh, briefly go into what the what the quarterback center exchange is. Um, it was pieced together today. So that's why the show is oh, going to be a little short ago. today. Two hours to go, all via text messages um, while I was at a pizzeria and a little bit while I was at church. But don't tell my parents. Um I hope they're not watching. No, they're not watching. Of course not. Are you of kidding me? Of course not. Yeah. Why would they be watching? Oh, breaking news. Jay Cutler's not returning for the game against the Buccaneers with his concussion. C- Cutler is out? Yep. Oh, boy. Props to all five people in the world who have him starting fantasy for him. That one, one of them would be me, so. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at his stats. He's got like four interceptions and a touchdown. He's got one point. Nice. Fantastic. I love every minute of it. And he's going to stay at one point. I love it. Actually, he might be at less now. I don't know. Let me check. Oh, fantastic. Did he get sacked any more times? Well, those don't count as negative fantasy points. So, I mean. That's true. He's got three points. Three points. Yep. Well, congratulations to three points out of your quarterback. (laughs) Let's get rolling into the show. Let's kind of explain real quick. It's a simple concept. Um, I was AJ Center. AJ was my quarterback in high school. That's just kind of the uh, that's just kind of where we go with the uh, quarterback center exchange because we like to hand the ball off to each other a lot through the legs. So we're gonna do that a lot here on this YouTube channel. Is uh, just kind of go back and forth with the quarterback center exchange. Uh, AJ, you want to be you want to add anything onto that? Hut hut hike. Hut hut hike. Uh, so we're just gonna as be breaking, they <laughs> <laughs> as they say. We'll break it down for you real quick. Like I said, we put, we pieced together this show just today over the, the past uh, two hours, and all we came up with was about five minutes worth of material. So uh, today's show is going to reflect greatly on what's happened in the world of college football over the past 24 hours. Um, the show will expand to other sports such as NFL, even MLB. NFL and, and college football are both football. Okay, well, uh, college football then. <clears throat> Today's going to be uh, all about college football, ha <laughs> ha hike, um, and we're just going to get right into the breaking news of college football today. Your initial thoughts, um, UCLA let go of Jim Mora today. A little surprised it wasn't at the end of the season, or are you surprised that it happened at all? Um, you know, to tell you the truth, I am a little surprised that it happened just because, for one, it's UCLA. Um, they haven't been really that good for a really long time, and then when they brought in Jim Mora, Obviously, you know, when you hire a coach, you're always expecting to have have instant success, which they didn't. I mean, they kept them around for six seasons. They had some good years, and by good, I mean decent, but nothing compared to, like, USC standard or Alabama standard. But I don't, I don't, I don't know who they're going to find to replace him that could be that much better of an option. Because it's certainly not Jed Fish. I no, tell it's you definitely that. not going to be Jed Fish. I, I know that one, too. Are you surprised he was named the interim? Or, I mean, would there be anybody else on that staff you think would be – a good, uh, good selection. I couldn't uh, really tell you anybody on that staff. I don't really know anybody on that staff either, but the only reason I know Jed Fish is because he was the offensive coordinator in Miami um, under uh, Al Golden for a couple of years, and then he was the offensive coordinator for the Jaguars, and then he got fired from that, and then he was the quarterback's assistant to the assistant coach for the University of Michigan. <laughs> So I don't know what he was doing there, but I, I guess he's probably the best qualified coach to to do that. I mean, at this point, the there's nothing there's nothing to do though. Just got to keep doing whatever they were doing for the first nine weeks of the season, and just hopefully not fall apart, which they already have. So they already have. I mean, you have a quarterback like Josh Rosen. I think you'd be able to piece together somewhat decent of a season. The Pac-12 isn't that good of a conference this season, but I mean, yeah, still but they decent. can't play defense. You're talking it's UCLA or the Pac-12 in, com- in general? UCLA. They can't play defense I'd agree. at all. Do agree. Um, real quick, let's touch on – let's let the fans know how much you just love Al Golden in that Miami uh, – back in those Miami days. Your thoughts on Al Golden, uh, especially having a Jed Fish 
who served under Al Golden now? Uh, so the day that Randy Shannon got fired, we were actually at Dave's house. And the next day they hired Al Golden and Al Golden. I was like, who the heck is this guy? And then they brought him in. He's wearing a white shirt and an orange tie. And that's the only thing I saw on the sidelines for four years. And let me tell you, that's all they did was wear shirts and ties on the sideline because they lost every game. It so was six a little bit of a Miami fan. Year. We're not being a little biased or anything when it comes to our oh, rankings. We just wanted to let you guys know when we days. get to the rankings later. I'm not talking about the rankings right now. We're not talking. Well, not right now. We will later. But yeah. Um, is there going to be? Is there anybody that would be attracted to a Pac-12 job like a UCLA job? Oh, uh, there's plenty of coaches that would be attracted to it. It's just them being able to to bring in the right coach. Because I mean, they could go out and get Lane Kiffin. Probably, but I don't know how that would go. Um, they could get Scott Frost from UCF, but uh, there's a bunch of other teams like Nebraska's trying to bid for him. Um, Chip Kelly, he could go to UCLA and have a have a hoop. I think the I best, mean, there's tons of coaches. No, I I agree with you. I'm personally surprised Chip Kelly doesn't have a uh, job right now in college football. I think that's where he belongs. Um, I also think the best fit for him is to go to like somewhere where you get a bunch of athletes like California or Florida. So having prominent openings like University of Florida and UCLA. And Tennessee. Um, and Tennessee. And Tennessee. And Nebraska. But let's, let's keep talking about Tennessee because their new interim head coach, Brady Hoke. The yeah. jokester Brady Hoke made his debut as the My <laughs> well, you know, well, I can't even imitate him very well. Ribs. <laughs> he made his funny thing. He made his debut as an interim coach yesterday against the king of interim coaches, Ed Ogeron, at LSU yesterday. Oh, uh, did, you ever, did you ever see the clip of Orgeron when he was on the stands before the El, the Ole Miss game this year? Um, and a reporter asked him what was the thing he misses the most about Ole Miss, and he said it was uh, like the marathon gas station with the lady that cooked the chicken on a stick. Did you see that clip? <laughs> that does not surprise me, though. Uh, out of sound bites and just out of – I think – personally, I think Ed Ogeron overall – is not that great of a coach, but man, I would love to just sit down and talk with that guy about fried chicken and mashed potatoes. He just seems like the kind of guy you could just talk about food and anything you could talk about football with. He wouldn't be very successful at it, but I feel like you could have a good conversation with him. Do you see his, uh, he, before he went out to the game yesterday, the, the sideline reporter just said something along the lines hold of, on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pretty sure this is against all copyright rules, but ah, so we're one episode in. We don't care about copyright rules. Did you find it? Yeah, can you see it? We can barely hear it. You know, there's such a thing as dead air, and we don't want to do uh, that in the first episode. All right, forget it. <laughs> I don't know what's we'll going post, on. We'll post the link to that. We'll post the link to that in the comments or on the in the description of the video, so you can check that out later. Also, um, post a link to my Twitch page too. Oh yeah, we'll post the link to the Twitch page. We'll touch on your Twitch page later. Your plug's not till the end. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. I thought this was the quarterback center exchange, not the Andy exchange. Oh, excuse me. Uh, 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 just kidding. Uh, it's on the JV report. <laughs> you are in a moderated video call. Oh, boy, I'm pushing lots of buttons I shouldn't be pushing right now. Okay. Anyways. Just look into the camera you have and talk. That's all you got to do. You're just you're being paid to stand and look that? pretty. Ooh. <laughs> all right, anyways. To, all right, back to Tennessee. Brady Choke uh, lost thirty to ten against a uh, uh, fried chicken marathon guy. Uh, it was Exxon. He said Exxon. It was like, oh, it was Exxon. Yeah. Dude, before he went out to the game yesterday, uh, the lady said, "What? What kind of? Because it was like pouring down rain." And the sideline reporters asked him, "Said what are what are some things you have to do to like to get around this rain and to like better prepare for this rain?" And he just said, "You gotta love football, man. You just gotta love football. This is great." <laughs> <laughs> Ed Ogeron, ladies and gentlemen. But he won. He beat Tennessee yesterday. 
so now the talks have to begin. Uh, who's going to be Tennessee's head coach? Uh, the first thing we have to ask is, well, Brady Hoke goes in and loses to LSU 30-10. to 10, But is it the right move to have Brady Hoke maybe take over full-time as a coach in Tennessee? Or do you see some other potential groomers out there, if you know what I mean? I know exactly yeah. what you mean. First, I'll talk about Brady Oak. Um, the only thing I have to say is, uh, did you watch Michigan football for the three years that he was the head coach? <laughs> well, uh, well. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to put him on the spot like that, but geez. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea, personally. There's a lot of good coaches out there. I would even bring back Lane Kiffin before I'd hire Brady Hoke. Lane Kiffin's a changed man. He's ready for Tennessee now. Rocky top. Rocky, do you think they're ready to forgive and forget? Um, I mean, he, he was at Tennessee before. They kind of chased him out of town. Do you think they're ready to forgive and forget and bring him back? Or do you think – Lane Kiffin. Let's let's talk about Lane Kiffin real quick. Then we'll go right back to Tennessee because I'm curious about Lane Kiffin. I thought he did a solid job as an Alabama coordinator. I thought he learned well under Nick Saban. And now yeah, except for the end. Florida Atlanta. Well, except for the end when he – except for the end there. But yeah, that aside – That aside. He, I think he's I think he's ready for a head coaching job once again. I mean, he's proven it at Florida Atlantic. I well, he's a head coach right now. Exactly. Well, I mean, he's ready for a head coaching job. I'm at a prominent head coaching job. Maybe not like – I mean, maybe he could take – Whoa, taking shots right? at the FAU. Where are they, the Owls? Uh, the Florida Atlantic Owls. It's like, uh-huh. uh, you know us. We're just media. We're rat poison. You know who the That's first head coach are. of FAU was? Prior to Kiffin? No, the very first head coach at FAU. Oh, do you know who it was? No, I do not. Who was that? Howard Schnellenberger, who was the head coach of the Hurricanes right before Jimmy Johnson back in the late 70s, early 80s, and he won a national championship. Also, fun fact, well, Mark Richt was a backup quarterback in Miami. A long time ago. I back did in the not 80s. know that. I did not know that. Congratulations on that feat for Miami. You're welcome. All righty. <laughs> back, uh, back to Tennessee. We already said Brady Choke is not in as the head coach there for the future. Um, top candidates? I tell you what, man, because I got my top candidate. I tell you what, man. <laughs> I like, tell you what, man. Spider 2 Y banana. Oh, he's going to go out there and throw a laser through a barn door. <laughs> That's my terrible impression of John Gruden, everybody. I, I you. tell you what, man, it's just the spider two wide banana. Now the two is just going to lie out to the right and banana out. And oh, it's man, I tell, what, the man. Flat. Boy, I tell you what, I tell you what, man, it's banana like throwing through eyes. a turkey hole on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> do you, what do you think? Is, is Gruden a serious con- contention? No. He's not. He's not going to come out of coaching. He would. I would never. If he was to ever come out of coaching to do anything, it, I don't think it would be in college. Personally, you mean come, do you mean come out of commentating? Right to coach. I don't think you'd ever do to it coach. in college. I, I think if he was going to become a coach, it would only be in the NFL because that's really all he knows. I mean, as he would probably say, and as most people that are within the inner circle of football coaching in college and coaching in the NFL are two completely different things or do completely different jobs, tons of different responsibilities. Like take, for example, recruiting, you know, you're basically in charge of the personnel for your entire set or for your entire team, all the players on it in college, you know, you got to deal with everything that goes on with that. And in the NFL, you've got general managers who are typically in charge of the personnel on the field. And all you have to do is coach. I don't think he wants all that. To be fair, in college, I mean, you have like, uh, you have these like, athletic directors of player personnel. Uh, yeah, but I, those I are just guys that you bring in to just—they don't do anything. I shouldn't say they don't do anything. They're—they don't make the final decision. True. Very true. Um, so you think Gruden's out for Tennessee? Is there any other prominent names you would think consider for the Tennessee job? Well, I guess it's really – it's just the two names that are really – I think the two best candidates for coaching is Chip Kelly and Lane Kiffin. I think one should go to Florida and the other should go to Tennessee. Now, who who goes where doesn't really matter to me, but I think Chip Kelly and Lane Kiffin are both going to be coaching in the SEC next year. 
Breaking news, according to AJ Zalewski, they'll break I said I the think <laughs> that's, a hot, that's not a hot take. It's a it's an opinion. That's not a breaking news. I'm not a journalist. I don't do that. Hot take right here by AJ Zalewski. Thank well, you. I tell you what, man. I tell you what, man. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk one more coach that I'm a little surprised is already gone. Um, I'm sure you're not. Will Musch. Do you see him ending up anywhere next season, or do you think he's going to take a season away? He's going to stay at South Carolina. No, I, uh, who got uh, – not Will Muschamp. Who just got fired from Florida? Oh, Jim McElwain? Jim McElwain. I don't know why I said Will Muschamp. That's because he was originally at Florida. But I'm talking Jim McElwain. Um, I don't know. I think he could coach like a Mac school, but he was not very impressive um, in Florida. You can't run – there's certain schools that you can run a pro-style offense at, and Florida is not one of them. Alabama is one. You could run the pro-style at Alabama, um, USC. It's just like it comes with the nature of the school that they're just – because they always have good defenses, so you can score 12 points a game and still win every time. At Florida, doesn't matter who you put out there, you're not going to play good defense all the time. Unless the first game of the year you go against Michigan – that's a good defense they played against. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad we agreed on that. Now, <laughs> something that you wanted to talk about, and I know you wanted to harp on because I don't know, I don't know which direction you're going. You just said you want to talk about, but I think we're both on the same page about SEC's bye week they had this previous week. Well, um, you got to include Clemson in that too in the ACC. Because they played the Citadel, so oh yeah, the Citadel. So the the pretty much the top nine because the the entire top nine stayed the same. Um, the only prominent game was Wisconsin against Michigan. Miami played Virginia hooked. and almost well, lost. Miami, Miami almost lost. Um, but they still but won by eighteen. Let's talk about these bye weeks that was had. Alabama fifty six, Mercer zero, Auburn forty two, UL Monroe fourteen, even South Carolina. Uh, beat up on Wolford. Um, like you said, Clemson beat up on the Citadel and Florida beat up on UAB. Uh, your kind of thoughts, your kind of talking points on these bye weeks and these uh, these late homecoming games, if they're even homecoming games. I don't know why you do these the week before rivalry week, but I'm sure you're <laughs> going to tell us all about it. Okay, so the way that the committee puts together their rankings every week because it's based on your strength of schedule. And so, yeah, Alabama plays everybody in the SEC, but then they also, the week before they go and play Auburn every single year, they're scheduling a 1AA team and beating them by 70 points. What What is the point of that? Nobody wants to watch that. I get it's college football, and you can do whatever you want, and it's not regulated like the NFL. Um, but I don't think it's good for college football when you have games, especially ones like this where you know for sure, 100%, that it's not going to be competitive. Nobody wants to watch that. It's bad for college football, and they shouldn't get rewarded for it, especially when it's at the end of the year. I mean, I understand – don't get me wrong. I understand tune-up games at the beginning of the year, like your first game of the season, because that's the way college football's always been. But the newest trend to play these teams like Alabama playing Mercer, you know, in week – what is it, week 12 or just a complete joke? Yeah, this was week 12. The- I just don't understand how the SEC could even let it happen. Well, the way that I see it, and this is only kind of my take, is, I mean, you look at these, if you look at the rankings, the history of the playoff committee rankings, they don't care about how you lose early in the year. They care about how you lose at the end of the year. So that's why they'd rather put these, they'd rather put these tune-up, these tune-up games towards the end of the year. It's these easy walk-through wins at the towards the end of the year. It's yeah, a but guaranteed if you, what, win. It's a guaranteed. Uh, our Andy. players healthy before a big rivalry week. But Andy, let's go ahead and hear what you have Andy, to say, AJ. Let's if, hear your- if the thing is, is, if you look at the stats, Alabama's been doing this for the last 15 years. Every week before they play Auburn, they're playing to nobody. Like they played Georgia Southern. I would think it was the year that Al- Auburn actually beat Alabama um, on the field goal kick, the field goal kick return at the end of the game when Alabama was number one. Do you remember that? Oh, I do. They played Georgia Southern the week before that, and that was before the uh, college football playoffs. So, 
I just don't understand how these games can make their way into the end of the season. Like, that's not good for college football. It's not good for college football as a whole. It's not good. It's well, Who it is good for is Alabama. Right before you go into a rivalry week, you get this quote-unquote bye week. I'm going to keep calling it a bye week. There is no chance – there's no chance ever that Mercer comes in and beats Alabama. And Mercer got blanked by Alabama. It's a bye week. It's a chance for these players to just kind of go through the motions and get ready for the Iron Bowl, which has pretty much taken over as like the predominant uh, rivalry week game. I think it has for a long time, speaking of the Iron Bowl. I think there's a lot of people in our area, in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan, that are still about all oh, the Michigan Ohio State game. That series hasn't been competitive for the last friggin' what, fifteen years? Well, you know. Well, <laughs> I mean, the last know. time Michigan won, Brady Hoke. No, that's not true because that was that one year that they beat Ohio State when uh, Luke Luke. Uh, it Fickle, was Luke Fickle, Fickle was the interim coach, and guess who Michigan's head coach was? Brady Hoke. Brady Hoke was the last Michigan coach to beat Ohio State. Yes, let's, two let's claps go. for him. Yes, very nice. Brady Hoke, very ladies nice. and gentlemen. Brady, Brady Hoke. Hoke. Wow, he's so good. He's so I good. I can't believe he doesn't have a job. That guy, let me well, tell he's you. an interim now. He does. He's got an interim job. Yeah, whatever. Is it going to lead to a prominent job for him? If not, a no, it's anyways? not. No, because he's not going to be able to do anything. They're just going to continue to lose for the rest of the year. But he's got head coaching experience. Yeah, so he should get a job at Cardinal Stritch then, because <laughs> that's all you need to get a job there. Cardinal <laughs> Stritch football, baby. Gosh, Brady Hoke will give you a call. I'll tell you uh, what. I think that school only hires people that have head coaching experience. Doesn't matter where they get it at. But they pass up on so many candidates and just go with whoever they can that has had coaching experience that they continue to be as bad as the way they are. That's all I have to say. Are we talking Tennessee Hot or are we back to talking Car- <clears throat> we talking Cardinal Stretch? We're talking our high school alma mater real quick. I don't know, high school alma mater. Hashtag free Dre Hamp. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> uh, the dynasty that never was. <laughs> I tell you what, we were going. We were going, we were going to the firehouse. <laughs> uh, and then we had Colbo throw his watch at a wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. Good times. Good times. Let's talk the only uh, – there's only one big change in the top 25. The, at least the AP and coaches poll came out today. Um, and the only big change, no surprise, Oklahoma State loses to Kansas State, so they slide eight places. Uh, down, I forget what that puts them at. That puts them below the top fifteen. I know that. Um, any thoughts? Any? I mean, Oklahoma State's that's two losses. There's absolutely no shot of an Oklahoma State getting into the into a playoffs. Is there? No, absolutely not. I was watching the uh, the college football playoff show this week, and one of the interesting stats that that uh, they had on ESPN is that after that ranking came out any team that lost has never made it into the final four so basically what they're saying is if alabama were to lose based on what's happened in the past not saying this will happen but if alabama were to lose to auburn basically alabama's chances of making it are done so who are who's still in contention and who do you think i know you wouldn't answer me last week but now i'm going to kind of pressure you into an answer give me your the aj zalewski top six and even the top eight let's see who's still outside looking in Who's going to make the playoffs and who still has a shot at the playoffs? You want my top eight? Well, we'll go ahead with eight teams. So you know they're going to – with conference championships, they're gonna, you can give me six if you want to just give me six. I'll give you six. Let's hear it. All right. So my finishing or just for this week? Because I'll give you mine for this week. I don't know if I can give you the finisher because I don't know. Let's go ahead and have it this week. I mean, things will change, obviously, with co- championships, and I'll, and I'll even ask you about some conference championships. But for now, let's hear your top six. Well, I got, as most of the most people can probably guess, and the committee has, it's going to be Alabama, Clemson, Miami, um, Oklahoma. I don't think Wisconsin did enough to jump Oklahoma. And then uh, Auburn, obviously. I mean, but two of those – four teams right there are going to eliminate each other. Two teams are going to be eliminated because four of them are playing. So I guess that's what I should say coming up in the next two weeks. 
<clears throat> interesting little piece that I know you'll like for sure, and I thought was interesting. Um, the AP polls came that came out. Uh, all vote, all first place votes went to Alabama, except for two. Those two went to the U. Turnover chain, bro. Turnover chain. Turnover chain. Are they still a threat? They put up a fight against Miami or Miami. They put up a fight against Virginia. Uh, it was a won. tough one. I, I, they, they won. They, won. they came little... out flat. It happens. It's college football. You're playing with 18 to 20-year-old kids. They're not grown men. This isn't their full-time job. It happens. So it's okay that they, they come out flat as long as they keep winning? Yeah. I mean, that's all they need to do to make the playoffs, right? They got to exactly. beat Pittsburgh well, next week and Clemson in the ACC championship. Where are they sitting at? They're sitting 11-0 right now? 10-0. They had a game that was canceled. That's right. That's right. Because of the hurricane. Because of the hurricane. Does that impact them at all? No. Does that you think they're looking like ah oh, they set out this one game? Shame on them. It's the same as the bye week that Alabama and Clemson just had. So <laughs> that's fair. <clears throat> I mean, Clemson might as they might as well not even schedule those games. Alabama they should actually just take a bye week because it won't affect them. Of the teams we just talked about, the four that we said are for sure in the five and six that are still looking outside looking in. Do you have any other teams that could possibly make the playoffs? Uh, the only one that I think is going to possibly make the playoffs is Ohio State. Unfortunately, if they go out and they spank Michigan, which they should, and then they play Wisconsin and they, they beat them by a solid three touchdowns, I think that'll put them in the final four just because that'll eliminate Wisconsin. So let's say Ohio State's number eight. That eliminates Wisconsin. Auburn and Alabama, one of those two is going to eliminate each other. And then Georgia and whoever the winner of that Auburn-Alabama game is going to have to play, and that's going to eliminate another team. So that's three teams eliminated right there. Plus Miami and Clemson are going to play each other, and that's going to eliminate one of those four. So that's four teams that are going to be eliminated. And if Ohio State can run the table, they got a shot. No Notre Dame for you? Nope. They sealed their fate when they didn't join a football conference. If you're Notre Dame, you can't, you can't make the playoffs without winning every game. That's just – there's nothing you can do about it. Hey, yeah. at this point, it's kind of their call to join a conference. They don't want to. Tough. They have to win every regular season game after that then. <clears throat> um, they had some nice cleats yesterday, though, those Newt Rockney cleats. Did you see them? I did not see them. I saw they a picture of them. I didn't, them. I, didn't, I didn't see them in action. I saw pictures of them. I thought they looked pretty cool. I would have – I thought they looked pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't see him in action, though. Yeah. <clears throat> well, AJ Zalewski, this has been a great first episode. Your closing thoughts. Do you have any final thoughts for us? No, I just hope everybody enjoyed and stay tuned because there's going to be uh, more nonsense and mayhem if we actually have time to prepare for something. Maybe exactly. not the next, next episode, time. but sometime down the road in <laughs> uh, five or ten years. Don't <laughs> Don't expect anything 20. better for the next uh, – there's not, not going to be anything better for the next episode. We're probably just going to piece it together two hours before. It's kind of do the same thing. Um, but maybe some future episode, our uh, our very own AJ Zalewski here, if he wants to – I'll go ahead and give you a little plug. Our own AJ Zalewski here has his own a little Polish band. Maybe they'll come up with a little uh, Polish entrance theme song for us. Uh, any chance of that? It's possible, you know. Hey. I'm a pretty good, I'm pretty good songwriter. I can't read any music, and I can't write any very good songs, but I can write songs. <laughs> All right. Or yeah. we could just play "Roll Out the Barrel." Roll out the barrel. I want to. I want to hear some. Uh, and nothing else matters. Well, that's not our band. That's freeze dried. Oh well. Have to give them a call. Yeah, we can call them. I'm sure you've got your Polish hookups. I'm not like a pimp or anything. I mean, I just <laughs> I'm a regular person. <laughs> Any final no, – no more final thoughts, no more final plugs, anything we missed for you, AJ? Do you want to talk about your Twitch? Oh, yeah, I started a Twitch page and <laughs> streamed for the first time last night playing <laughs> zombies with my GF. It was great. We made it to like round 12 three times, but we keep dying because we just keep dying. But, you know, besides that, I played some Madden this morning. You can check it out. I got spanked, and then uh, I was playing one game. I didn't know how Twitch works, so I had the – the chat on so I could chat into the microphone to myself because I didn't have any followers or anybody watching, but I was chatting and I didn't realize that I was in the game chat. And one of the guys that was beating the pants off me got on and just started ripping me and he didn't know he was on Twitch. And I talked to him afterwards and we're going to play some mutt squad sometime down the road. His name was the big bear or something. I don't remember the big badger, but it was pretty funny. The big, 
the big badger. But we yeah, look I was kind of I was kind of caught off guard by that. But yeah, you can check it out at twitch.com slash AJZ10. Yeah, I have no please. followers. We want to check out the big so badger sad. versus we want to check out the big badger versus the big nose. From the QB Center Exchange, I'm Andy Geierman. That's AJ Zalewski. We thank you guys so much for joining us for this first episode. Peace out, Girl Scout. Peace out, Girl Scout. Once again, you can follow us on YouTube, follow the JV Report on Facebook, Twitter. This will be available on the JV Report. This is Report the longest wrap-up of all time. Not Holy time. moly. Longest wrap-up. I'm waiting for that. I don't hear the closing music. I'm not being walked off stage. So beep, 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 Oh, now it comes. Beep, 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 beep. Now it comes. And we're done. And we're done. I love you all.